Lakers lose to the Kings, 110-106, to the final score. Lakers now 36-27 and on the season. They have lost uh, five of their last six games. Very disappointing loss tonight versus the Sacramento Kings. Uh, shocker, a surprise. I'm a little bit stunned here, Laker fans. Not going to lie, a little bit stunned here. Um, I don't think anybody thought we'd be doing a post-game show tonight thinking that the Lakers would lose to the King, and there's many reasons for it. And you know, I, I think this game reminds me a little bit of – Early on in the season, when Lakers would play teams that uh, you just assumed they would just blow out, no problem, and they were very casual about that opponent. And I know this is LeBron James' first game back. I know the Lakers are starting to, you know, obviously try to figure out the chemistry, the this, that. There's no excuses, Laker fans. I mean, just think about this. No De'Aaron Fox for the Sacramento Kings. Kings have been awful this year. Kings gave up 154 points in their last game against the Utah Jazz. Um, no Harrison Barnes. Um, you know, you got Buddy Heald who put up, I think Buddy Heald had literally two points in this game. Two points in 32 minutes was one of 11 from the field. And the Lakers couldn't find a way to beat the Sacramento Kings. So this one is a uh, tough one to swallow. And it there's, there's a lot of things I can get into. But the one thing that always sticks out to me for the Lakers is if you play defense, if you're interested in the game, you're going to come out with a W. If you don't play defense and you're not interested in the game, you you have a risk of losing because you give teams like the Sacramento Kings, you give them just enough confidence to think, do we kind of have a shot here? And in that fourth quarter when the Lakers, uh, coming into the fourth quarter, they were up 10, they get outscored 32-18 to 18 in the fourth quarter. They were, Lakers were not going for the kill. Lakers were more just very casually going about the game and um, it, it might not seem like a big deal, and I'm not saying the world is about to end. You only got nine games left in the regular season. Uh, I'm pretty sure every Laker fan wants this team to position themselves to stay in that number five spot. So you make things a lot more interesting, and they don't need to be that uh, that interesting. Um, I, I want to take as many calls from Laker fans as possible. So 877-710-ESPN, your thoughts on the game. As simple as that. What is uh, what went wrong tonight? What has gone on over these last five or six games? Um, and is there a bigger concern other than just this game tonight? Lakers lose to the Kings, 110-106-877-710 ESPN. All right, quick shout out here. Thanks to Core Seltzer. You can now stream this show on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook Live. Core Seltzer, Rocky Mountain Refreshment, now in a hard seltzer. Check this out. Every 12-pack purchase refreshes our rivers with 500 gallons of water. Now that's refreshing. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, brewed in Fort Worth, Texas. Details at CoorsSeltzer.com. We're going to do this a little bit different. So, you know, we're obviously streaming the show as well, as I'm mentioning here. And I got opportunities to, uh, to read off a lot of this live stream as well. I'll read off Twitter, at Alan Sliwa, if you want to hit me on Twitter, and uh, you can uh, give me and share your thoughts on the game. Let's just say uh, a lot of comments here on Twitter. A lot of, a lot of comments uh, coming in here. Obviously, Laker fans um, uh, not happy with the way this team has been playing. Look, I'm, I'm not going to sit here as I read some of the comments that say uh, uh, Lakers aren't going to get past the first round. No, no I, I, don't think it's, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. But I do think that the Lakers certainly have put themselves in a position where um, when you only have, when you only have nine games left, you want every single game to count as you're kind of measuring yourself getting into the postseason. Um, I heard coach say today. I heard a coach in the pregame show talk about it. Coach, literally, the exact word he said is it's going to be tough to find chemistry in just ten games. So it just kind of shows you how important each one of these games are going to be for the Lakers as you prep for the postseason. It's Sacramento. It's the Sacramento Kings. Um, no, this game is not going to be the difference of the Lakers winning a championship or not, but you want them to start gaining some type of uh, momentum as we get a little bit closer to the postseason, and they've made their lives a lot more difficult than I think it needs to be. You know, it's funny. I was listening to uh, listening to Aunt, or listening to Michael during the broadcast with John. Michael kept saying that he's like, "Yeah, they're making things too difficult. Shooting too many jumpers. Why not go? Why not just go down low to Anthony Davis?" And this is a, this is a theme in the NBA. You give teams confidence, you give them momentum, things like this can happen. All right, let me uh, take a couple quick phone calls here. Uh, let's start off with Troy in Newport Beach. Troy, appreciate you calling in. You're on the Pizza Hut Lakers postgame show. You there, Troy? 
Yep. What do you think, Troy? What do you think of uh, – give me your thoughts on the game. Well, if you look at the way we played last year, mm-hmm. we're not using our roster like we did last year. Shooter should not be playing point guard along down the stretch, the closing lineup. Uh, LeBron needs to be the point for our team like he was last year. Yeah, I mean, listen, the uh, and I appreciate you calling in. The I'm going to go back to this. The offense was obviously stagnant in the fourth quarter, only had 18 points. You're going to have nights where you miss it. Who's on the Sacramento Kings where they should be putting up 110 points? Who? Seven guys scoring double figures, and that's with Buddy Heald only having two points? That's insane to me. I mean, it really is. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton is a very, very nice player. I heard Michael saying, no question about it, he's going to be an all-star at some point in his career when some of these older, when some of the older guards, you know, kind of fade away from the game in the next five years or so. Um, 110 points, 110 points. I mean, get some stops, get stops when you need them, get critical stops. The Lakers obviously couldn't do that. Let me squeeze in another call here. Uh, let's do, um, let's do Scooter in LA. Scooter, what's going on? How you doing? How you doing, Alan? Do, doing good, man. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say, man, um, these Lakers, man, I mean, they're a turnover machine today, especially Schroeder, man. It seemed like uh, fourth quarter, he was turn- He must have had at least six, seven turnovers, seemed like, by himself. And this team Schroeder is... Schroeder had, like, Schroeder wow, had five turnovers. LBJ had five as well. Yeah, wow. You know, they have to, they have to uh, fix that up, man, before... The playoffs start, and you know, it looks like now, it looks like they're going to play in the in the, in the, in the playing tournament, man. I don't see how they can, uh, you know, like like uh, the coach said, to get to get rid of this before the uh, playoffs start. Uh, appreciate you calling in, Scooter. Um, you know when you you don't want to overreact to one game, but you're frustrated on that one loss, so you kind of find yourself right in the middle of not overreacting, but kind of overreacting. I I feel like that's where I'm at right now. Um, And it just uh, threw me for such a curveball that this was even a game. I'm thinking here by halftime or so, this is a 15-point game. Michael and I do in the pregame show. Maybe maybe that's a good example of we weren't paying attention thinking that this was going to be a game, and the Lakers was the same thing on the court. Um, Can they be a part of that playing tournament? They definitely can. Let's let's talk about that when we come back because – there's something about where the standings are, and I still don't think the Lakers are going to be part of the play-in tournament because I don't think you could trust Portland. I don't think you could trust Dallas, even though within one game you could fall from fifth to seventh and be in that play-in tournament like the Lakers. Uh, let's do that when we come back. Eight seven 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 ten ESPN. By the way, I see all these. Uh, I see all these chats here or all these uh, comments here. I'll start reading some of those as well. I'll start getting some of these uh, Twitter messages when we come back. We'll take a quick peek at um, a couple clips from Lakers head coach Frank Vogel. Get his thoughts on the game. This is the Pizza Hut Lakers post game show on seven ten ESPN. Heel hasn't scored yet. Here is Jamezi Medtu to Halliburton. Down low, Rashad Holmes blocked by AD. Ball goes out of bounds. They'll give it to the Kings, but a spectacular block by Anthony Davis. Five blocks for Anthony Davis, but not enough for the Lakers. 110-106, they lose to the Sacramento Kings. Lakers now 36-27 and on the season. The defensive play of the game is brought to you by Adriana's Insurance. Win and save on your auto insurance. And only Adriana's Insurance can guarantee it. We give you more options, unique offers, and exclusive opportunities to get the coverage you need at the best price. Visit savewithadrianas.com today. Adriana's Insurance, more options, no contracts, just savings. Yes, if you're just tuning in right now, the Lakers lose to the Sacramento Kings 110-106. Um, still trying to figure out how that happened. A couple comments I want to read here real quick. On Twitter, Ahmad Ahmad. Um, obviously disappointing to lose when we had a 10-point lead in the fourth, but it's also the first time Braun, AD, and AD have played together. Biggest takeaway will be improving communication on offense and defense, which will come with time. I get it. I get the positive approach. I just don't agree with it. I don't think you need that much to beat the Sacramento Kings. I think if LeBron James wasn't playing in tonight's game, which was, look, this came out of nowhere. I mean, earlier in the day, we didn't think. Yesterday, we got the uh, uh, Lakers send out the report of, okay, hey, this is who's probable, who's questionable, and who's out. LeBron was out. So we got the news earlier today. Woj had reported it, a couple other reporters. And then next thing you know, we get it from the Lakers that he's going to be questionable. And then by the time, you know, we're hearing from Lakers head coach Frank Vogel, we knew he was going to be playing. 
I just don't have an excuse here. So to say that it's the first time Braun, AD, and AD have played together, Anthony Davis and Andre Drummond, that's yeah, fine if you're playing the Clippers. It's fine if you're playing Utah. If you got Brooklyn on the schedule, if you got a healthy Phoenix team there, I mean, if if you have, if you're playing one of the elite teams, I get it. It's going to take a little bit of time. But if you're playing the Sacramento Kings, who just gave up 154 points in their last game, it's tough for me to make you know an excuse on that one. Uh, before I take some more phone calls, by the way, eight seven seven. 710 ESPN, your thoughts on uh, tonight's game. Um, let me read off our stream here. Facebook, Peter Sisson. Lakers waiting for LeBron to win the game for them, standing around. I will tell you this. If there's one thing that uh, – if there's one thing I, I can't stand, and I think this happens, I think it's very natural. One of the things that this Lakers team I thought was doing a much better job of when LeBron and Anthony Davis were out because they had absolutely no choice, they stopped depending on – you know, obviously they're, they're stars, so they're depending on each other. And I thought, okay, hey, that, that's going to play to the Lakers' benefit when those two players come back. I know. It's just one game with LeBron James and Anthony Davis together. Throw Andre Drummond in the mix. I get it. I understand all that. But with all that being said, that is one of the things that kind of stands out to me. The last thing I want to see, because I think this Lakers team is so talented, is everybody stand, standing around and waiting for LeBron to do something. You know what? Just throw it to AD. AD... LeBron's going to bail us out. AD's going to bail us out. That's the last thing you want to see from this Lakers team because there's too much depth for them to be, you know, obviously waiting for that. Um, Peter in Hermosa Beach. Peter, what's going on? Thank you for calling into the Pizza Out Lakers Pulse Game Show. Go ahead, Peter. Hey, great. Hey, n- nice to see you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I, you know, I'm preface this, I'm, I'm a big gambler. I bet like two, $3,000 every night on NBA. And the real issue is, Andre Drummond is not a good fit. We would have been better off with Damian Jones dunking on people's heads like he did in that first quarter tonight. Uh, Drummond is he's just a name. We should have kept Damian Jones. Montrez has sulked every, ever since he got here. Gasol cried in, in the uh, press conference. It, it, it ruined the chemistry, and it's probably going to kill it, – it's going to kill the. It's probably going to kill the season because that's not a good fit. I appreciate you calling in. I'm not sure, Peter, the example of you gambling every night. What that had to do with the Andre Drummond portion, but thank you for uh, adding that that into the mix there. Um, you know, I've heard this a couple times. I've heard this the last couple of games. People kind of questioning the Andre Drummond part, and it's just a name, and it's this and that. I, I'm I'm still trying to figure out what Laker fans. Not everybody's saying this, by the way, but what the issue would be with Andre Drummond. Andre Drummond came to the Lakers for nothing, for nothing. And all I was hearing for a while back was how Marcus Gasol shouldn't be the starting center. And, you know, there's actually a lot of Laker fans that we're talking about in the past, if you guys remember this, but it was the, well, where's JaVale? Where's Dwight Howard? We've heard that conversation all season long. Lakers went out and got another big. They got, obviously, Andre Drummond. Drummond pretty much is 15 and 10 a night, maybe 12 a night. And where you're really going to see Andre Drummond, the difference between Lakers and some of these other teams, how the Clippers going to adjust with that much size that the Lakers have or Brooklyn or some of these other teams. So I'm not one to think that grabbing Andre Drummond for virtually nothing in the buyout market was a bad move. Because we've also sat here for a lot of postgame shows and we've talked about how um, you know, I've heard Laker fans express this, that they weren't crazy about having Marcus Gasol in there and picking up all those minutes. Give it a second on that front, but I don't think, uh, you know, tonight the Lakers are not losing because of Andre Drummond. Lakers are losing because they're disinterested in a team that wasn't that interesting, and the Sacramento Kings took advantage of the Lakers. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Ken in Newport Beach. Ken, what's going on? Thank you for calling in. Go ahead, Ken. Oh, that's okay. Um, if defense looked like the Lakers thought this was a preseason game or it was an all-star game, there was very little movement, open shots. But let's talk about offense. Mm -hmm. The starting five were two for 19 from three. Mm -hmm. Two for 19, okay? Uh, 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 Our starting guard was 0 for 5. He was a minus 19 with five turnovers. Kuzma took one shot all game. Hmm. One shot. It looks like they never played together in, in their lives. And the last 
play, I'm not going to call it a play, the last shot, everybody in the world knows it was going to be LeBron. Gee, if you're two for 19 from your starters, how about putting the one guy that was shooting good, McLemore, in the game at the end if you want to try to win it? And there was some questionable moves coaching, but how do you, two for 19 from your starting five from three? Yeah, not, 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 uh, not exactly the uh, greatest game for uh... – for the Lakers from the three-point line. And by the way, this becomes a question. Ken, I appreciate you calling in. This is always, you know, this has been a conversation. We've been having this conversation about threes for a while now. Lakers end up shooting, what they shoot, 25%, 7 to 28. Um, I, w- I want to play this real quick because I think this is going to be a fer- perfect segue for when we come back. And I know we got a bunch of callers lined up right now, 877-710-ESPN, if you want to be a part of the Pizza Hut Lakers postgame show. Lakers lose to the Kings 110-106. to 106. When we come back, let me play this clip from Lakers head coach Frank Vogel um, talking about just finding the chemistry before the playoffs start. I mentioned this already. I talked about this. And I, I've heard you know people um, say that, do the Lakers have enough time to kind of figure this thing out, incorporate everybody together? AD was out for a long time. LeBron was out. You added Andre Drummond. You added Ben McLemore. That's not something to me that I I have had any concern with. I've always said that, no, I think they'll be just fine. When we come back, I'll play what Coach thinks from a chemistry perspective in these final nine games. Um, Plus, we'll take more of your phone calls. We'll read more of your tweets and more of your comments on our restream. Stay right here. Thank you for tuning in. Pizza Hut Lakers postgame show on 710 ESPN. 110 106. Lakers lose to the Sacramento Kings, 36-27 and on the season. Just a half-game advantage over the Dallas Mavericks. I'll get into the standings in just a second. Standings are kind of fascinating right now, 5-7. through seven. Uh, Points in the Paint all season long is sponsored by Vista Paint. Right now, local residents can take 40% off on Factory Direct high-quality Vista Paint products. A Vista Paint team member will show you how locally owned, manufactured, and operated since 1956. Vista Paint, Lakers uh, 66 to 44. They win the points in the paint pal. They could just get some threes to fall. Seven of 28 from the three point line, just 25%. Um, that part is certainly frustrating. So, uh, this is going to be a perfect segue to, to taking a listen to coach. Um, on YouTube right now, Lakers are nowhere close to where they were before in this uh, before the seeding games at the bubble in terms of chemistry. That's Alex Trent on our stream. Um, Let's take a listen to Coach, get his thoughts, because following the game, he talked a little bit about chemistry, and he talked a little bit about uh, trying to take advantage of these last only nine games left to try and find some type of chemistry. Yeah, we're going to look at as many things as we can down the stretch as we can. And, you know, we don't have uh, enough time to look at everything. We don't have enough time for, for those guys to, to really, uh, you know, find a chemistry necessary for the playoffs, but we're going to make the best of it. You know, everybody's in a, you know, their own unique situation, and, you um, you know, I believe that, you know, over these final nine games and into the playoffs, uh, you know, we're going to find the right right rhythm and timing and, and chemistry and um, have success in the playoffs, you know, but it's going to be a little bit bumpy on the, along the way. All right, that's uh, Lakers head coach Frank Vogel right there. Okay, as far as the chemistry goes, um, what are your thoughts, Laker fans? What do you think? You think that that can be something that plays an issue the rest of the way? I mean, listen, the rest of the way it's nine games. Yes, I would mentioned after Toronto – which is the next game on Sunday, five straight games against playoff teams, which, by the way, I'm looking forward to. I think that's important for the Lakers. I think they'll wake up for those games. I think if there's ever a time that you want the Lakers to be in tougher predicaments, tough games, I hope – I was telling Michael in the pregame show, Lakers got the Clippers coming up in less than a week or so. Maybe it's a week from today. I would hate to all of a sudden the Clippers are are sitting Kawhi and Paul George and some – no, no, we need as much – prep and practice against good playoff teams before the postseason starts. So if you want to comment on that, 877-710 span. Let's get uh let's grab a couple more calls here. Let's go to Noah in Northridge. Noah, what's going on? Thank you for calling in. Uh thank you. Thank you for having me. Um I just I just think the Lakers just they didn't play well tonight. Like LeBron, you know, I know he came back and he scored sixteen points, seven assists, eight rebounds. But you know, and I know that it's going to take time for the chemistry to start. But we need some, we need some, you know, impact from these other players. Kuzma scoring two points, Macklemore, you know, Harold Morris, Tucker. They need to start, you know, contributing more, especially in the clutch. And I felt like that shot by LeBron at the end. I just, I don't, you know, I knew they were going to give him the ball, but 
I feel like they could have went down low to AD or they could have done another option to at least put it into overtime. So. No, I, I think if uh, I think that if they were interested in overtime, appreciate you calling in, by the way, I think they would have probably dropped, uh, drew up a different play. And obviously LeBron was going for the win, and they were trying to end it. But why is it coming down to a final possession? And I get it as well. You know, you're saying that's going to take time, chemistry. It's the Kings. It's the Sacramento. Have you guys been seeing any of these games with the Sacramento Kings lately? They're getting demolished by teams. Um you know, Michael and I were talking about it. What's the what's the leash for a guy like Luke Walton? Uh, even you, you get ten teams that get an opportunity to be a part of the playing tournament. They're five and a half games from the tenth team coming into this game. So I don't have much ammo here when I'm talking about the Sacramento Kings. I don't have many things I could say, and they're arguably two of their best players, De'Aaron Fox and Harrison Barnes, are not in this game. So with all that being said, you know, I, I get it. You know, it's a bad game. It's one of those that you just want to kind of flip the script. But uh, when when I hear somebody saying that, you know, that final possession to they could have drew up a better play and why you're going for the three and go for the win, why is it coming down to a final possession? 32-18 to 18 in the fourth quarter. They're outscored by 14 points in the fourth quarter against the Sacramento Kings. They walked into the fourth with a 10-point lead. All right, I'm going to let other people talk here. Uh, Justin in New York. Justin, appreciate you calling in, bud. Yes, hi. Good to be on the show. Um, Thank you. The Lakers right now, these are two wake-up calls. So the other night we lost to the Wizards, tonight we lost to the Kings, right? So let's so let's talk about this. The Lakers right now, they're in the fifth seed right now. You have the Mavericks in sixth, Trailblazers in seventh, and the Grizzlies in eighth. In my opinion, mm-hmm. this Lakers team is a disgrace right now. And I say this because, yes, the chemistry is off right now, but these players have been playing each other for over four to three months right now together. And in my opinion... This is a disgraceful alpha, and yes, LeBron has just come back. But these guys need to produce and whatsoever. You have Drummond and AD. They need to get along right away now. And if, if things don't even turn, we're looking at a second round or third round exit because right now this does not look like a finals team as we speak. And appreciate it's, it's just really scary now, and I'm a Laker fan, man. It's really appreciate scary. Appreciate you calling in. Thank you for calling in, Justin. Uh, let's try Sebastian in Puerto Rico. Sebastian, thank you for calling all the way out in Puerto Rico. What's going on? Hey, how's it going? Good, man. Thank you. Um, good. I just want to say um, I feel like we're shooting too many threes. We're, we're getting too comfortable in the perimeter, and we should be attacking the paint more. And I also believe that Gasol should be getting more of a look so that he can create some good offense for our team. But I feel like we're just settling too much. And the effort on the rebounding, how are we getting out-rebounded with AD and Drummond on the court? I just don't get it. Yeah, that uh, and, and tonight they actually weren't out rebound forty three to thirty seven. But we've seen some games where that's been the case. So I appreciate you calling in. Yeah. Um, okay, so Laker fans frustrated. Uh, I'm sure the Laker organization and the players and Lakers head coach Frank Vogel certainly frustrated in a game like this. And I had a couple of people point out the standings here. Um, let me actually. Uh, this is this is a this is I think an interesting part of where the Lakers sit. You can't really determine what any of the other teams are going to do, but I will tell you this. Denver is only a half game away from the Clippers. Phoenix and Utah have the exact same record. I don't remember ever looking at the NBA standings and not seeing the Utah Jazz with the number one record in the NBA, but Phoenix beat up on Utah earlier today. So here's the reality. I cannot tell you who the Lakers are going to face, what it's going to look like. It's changing every single day. Next time we do a post-game show, which is going to be on Sunday night, um, Clippers could be sitting in the fourth spot. So whether the Lakers end up in fifth, sixth, seventh, it has less to do what other teams are doing. It has more to do with the Lakers have too good of a team and too good of a roster to lose games like this. Is it going to happen through the course of a season? It is. But this is not one of those games where I have, you know, obviously many excuses I can help make for them. Uh, Juan in Glendale. Juan, what's going on? You're on the Pizza Lakers post game show. Uh, hey, Steve, well, hey, uh, quick thing, man. Mm-hmm. One thing I, I want to mention. Uh, you know what? I, I always say uh, I, I hate uh, comparing uh, Kobe and uh, LeBron, man. But uh, I, don't, I don't know if you noticed, there was a couple plays towards the end of the game there where uh, AD got the ball in the post. And uh, you know what? Instead of going in and taking the guy under the basket, he shoots a fadeaway. Mm-hmm. In that case, Kobe was tell Gasol in, in that manner, you know what, take this guy to the hole, yell at him. 
And LeBron, I see him laughing, uh, AD laughing after the play. But you know what, man? With that type of attitude, like uh, the caller said before, man, I, I don't know. This doesn't look right. Juan, I appreciate appreciate you calling in. Tell you one thing. We're in the playoffs, and that's game five. Uh, AD is going to be – that's not going to be the case. And I, I am literally making an excuse here, but uh, I say that because you know when it's – it's money time, and it's an important, critical moment. Playoffs, that's not going to be the case. You should have heard Michael Thompson on the broadcast. He probably said 40 different times, throw the ball down to AD. Throw the ball. Why do you keep taking threes? Throw the ball down to AD. All right, uh, more of your phone calls coming up next. 877-710-ESPN. Uh, LeBron is speaking to the media now, so if we, get, uh, if we get some clips on that, I'll make sure to get his thoughts on the game. So we'll do all that coming up next. Uh, read more of your tweets. Thank you for uh, being a part of the show. Pizza at Lakers Post Game Show on 710 ESPN. 110-106, the uh, final Kings over the Lakers, 36-27 and 27 on the season. One game now uh, separates the Lakers, half a game with Dallas, one game with the Portland Trailblazers. Dallas has a tiebreaker, uh, fifth to seventh. That's how close it is. The number three and number four spot is within a half game. The number one and number two in the Western Conference are tied, identical, Utah and the uh, Phoenix Suns. So the Western Conference getting incredibly, incredibly interesting um, I want to, uh, let me read off a couple of messages here. So we got uh too fast, uh, streaming on YouTube. Lakers are 0 two without Caruso. He makes the difference in my opinion. I will say something that that is one thing I probably have not talked enough about that Alex Caruso is one of those players. He does so many little things, doesn't need the ball, plays excellent defense. I tell you what, when we played the Washington wizards back on Wednesday, Uh, We could have used him in the backcourt trying to guard Bradley Beal or Russell Westbrook. So I I think it has been underestimated that he's been out. He was a game-time decision. We saw him warming up. Coach mentioned he's actually warming up right now. We'll see if he comes back and he stayed out with back spasms. We know he'll be back soon. Maybe it's another game or two or whatever the case is. I, I agree with that. I think there is something to that. Uh, my problem, my issue in a game like tonight, this shouldn't have been a game. If if we are sitting here, if Lakers, if LeBron hit that final shot, uh, that last shot that he took, and Lakers won by one, hypothetically, right? They won 109, 108, or whatever the score was at that point. I'd still be sitting here, and I'm sure every Laker fan would still be sitting here and saying, yeah, well, why is that game so close? It shouldn't have been that close. So with or without Caruso, I don't think that changes uh, too much here. Um I want to play a clip here from LeBron James' uh, post-game interview. Uh, he's talking about how he's feeling and uh, uh, how he's doing since, uh, you know, obviously playing in this game. Yeah, I mean, I haven't played in a game in six weeks. And, uh, you know, no contact, no 5-on-5. Five five. I've been doing a bunch of individual workouts and, and um, you know, a lot of running, trying to keep my, you know, my heart rate going and my conditioning going. And, uh, you know, for my first game in six weeks, I, I felt okay. Um, as far as my win, I felt pretty good. As far as my ankle, um, my ankle was a, a little tight at times. Obviously, just you know, just doing different movements, different things that I haven't done. Uh, obviously, in the game situation, in six weeks. So I think uh, you know, as the games go on, uh, that will continue to improve. But um, I, I came out uh, unscathed and uh, and, and, and um, you know, pretty good. So it's a good start. All right, I'll throw this out there to uh, Laker fans. What do you think, LeBron? Just LeBron specifically, eight seven 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 ten ESPN. What did you think of LeBron's first game back? Missed 20 games, came back. I will say this. I'm surprised he went, you know, 32 minutes for the Lakers. Um, Coach mentioned there wasn't going to be – there wasn't going to be a a minutes restriction that they would kind of slowly just – they try to be smart about it. Came right in. I mean, let's just say LeBron uh, didn't waste any time of trying to get back and, you know, obviously try to contribute for the Lakers. uh, But they still lose 110-106. Okay, let uh, let me grab a couple quick phone calls here. Uh, let's go to, let's go to Solomon in Lake Balboa. Solomon, uh, appreciate you calling in. Go ahead, bud. Hey, thanks, Alan. A uh, real quick question to LeBron. I think LeBron's fine. He, he almost looked like he didn't, didn't even miss a beat. Mm-hmm. You know, LeBron's LeBron. <laughs> you, you would expect nothing less. And, and of course, uh, you know, he wasn't the reason we lost tonight. Well, maybe he could have got 40. We would have won. No, you nailed it. The team, after they got a 10-point lead, it seemed like they just they, they disengaged. They said, oh, you know what, let's just put it in cruise control. And two things you can control. I know the shooting was atrocious tonight, but when you have that many turnovers, you're not mentally engaged. And when you give that many points up to a team like Sacramento, that means you don't want to put the effort in on defense. 
those two things were, were very disturbing tonight. And I am getting a little tired, as I'm sure you are. How many times are we going to say, man, we did not expect them to lose tonight? Mm-hmm. Solomon, appreciate you calling in. Thank you for calling in. No, we didn't. I didn't expect them either. I, I you know, Maybe I ran my mouth too much. Um, when Anthony Davis came back, I started saying that they're not going to they're not going to lose. Forget about this whole playing turn. That, that's not even going to be a conversation. Why would it be a conversation? Anthony Davis, look at the depth that this Lakers have. This is before we knew when LeBron was going to come back. Dennis Schroeder, and go down the list. Montrez Harrell, Kyle Kuzma, Talon Horn Tucker, Alex Crusoe, KCP. I mean, this team is loaded. Ben McLemore shows what he could do coming off the bench. So to be 1-5 in, in their last six games, uh, to be 1-4, since Anthony Davis came back, and then add this game, um, you know, obviously on the back end for LeBron James, I wasn't expecting that. I mean, that's the last thing I expected. I thought Lakers were actually going to start mowing through teams um, once Anthony Davis came back. So let me let me give you guys a quick preview of what the Lakers got coming up. All right, so and the one and five. So if you guys remember, lost those lost that last game to the Utah Jazz. The two they played against Dallas. I would have bet. Uh, I'd have bet a lot of money that the Lakers win that second one against the Dallas Mavericks. That obviously didn't happen. The one win that they have is against Orlando, and then lost obviously against Washington and Sacramento. So this is what they got coming up. Final month. So next time the Lakers play, we're in May, and this will be obviously the final nine games of the regular season. You got Toronto coming up on Sunday. Shouldn't be, you know. Yes, there's some talent there. Fred Van Fleet. Um, Pascal Siakam, uh, Kyle Lowry. There's some talent there. I'm not going to say there isn't, but the Toronto Raptors should not be hanging with the Los Angeles Lakers. After that, you got Denver, Clippers, Portland, Phoenix, New York. All five of those teams uh, in playoff position right now. They're either uh, right in the thick of it, atop the entire, like the Phoenix Suns. Clippers obviously going to be a, a legitimate threat. So, Keeping all those teams in mind, that's what the Lakers got coming up. I think they need this, to be honest with you. I think they need – I feel like this Lakers team is one of those teams where they accept and they want challenges more than just kind of going out and, and uh, going about their day, and there isn't something to play for. I really feel like that. You guys remember early in the season, Lakers had three games in a row. They went into overtime. Those three games, uh, was it Oklahoma City, Detroit, something like that. And it felt like in those games, they just were incredibly disinterested. This was one of those games against the Sacramento Kings where it was very similar. It felt like they were disinterested in a game like this. So you got nine games left. The standings are tight. You're not the the highest up you can be in the standings is going to be number five. The furthest you'll fall back is number seven. Uh, obviously, you fall back to number seven. You put yourself in an interesting position where you're in this play-in tournament, which I think all NBA fans are a fan of the play-in tournament because it's more basketball. But what we're not fans of is uh, the Lakers being in, in that play-in tournament. We don't want to see the Lakers in that in that play-in tournament. We obviously just uh, want to see the uh, Lake Show handle business and finish off these last nine games. I'm, uh, I'm actually excited that they got five games against tough teams, some challenging teams. We'll see what the Lakers can do there. All right, 110-106, the final score. Uh, next broadcast. Next broadcast, by the way, coming up. Um, I mentioned uh, it's this Sunday versus the uh, Toronto Raptors. Who would have thought here? Lakers and the Sacramento things. Uh, By the way, quick uh, thank you here. Coor Seltzer. Uh, Obviously, as everybody knows here, you can now stream the show on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook Live. Coor Seltzer, Rocky Mountain Refreshment now in Hard Seltzer. And check this out. Every 12-pack purchase refreshes our rivers with 500 gallons of water. Now that's refreshing. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, brewed in Fort Worth, Texas. Details at CoorsSeltzer.com. Next broadcast, Lakers in Toronto, Sunday, 5.30. Tip-off set for 7 o'clock. couple quick thank yous. Thank you to Rebecca Womble, Jesse Lopez, Curtis Poindexter, and Carlos Saisu. Thank you to everybody on 710 ESPN, everybody that's uh, also tuned in on our stream and our broadcasts. Uh, appreciate you guys being a part of the show. Back on Sunday. Have a good uh, rest of your night, Laker fans.